Okay. This is Bill Vonita with the EPA Energy Star Buildings Program. Thank you for your time today and welcome to our webinar entitled An Energy Star Partnership Success Story, Boston Properties and Enernoc. So we're scheduled for uh, 30 minutes here, um, which will be tight, but we will leave time for questions at the end. Um, this is a new uh, format of webinar for us um, where we focus on stories of partnering successes between uh, participants in the Energy Star Buildings Program. And today we have the unique opportunity here um, from a champion partner, Boston Properties, who is uh, one of the largest owners, managers, and developers of first-class office buildings in, in the U.S. Um, and we're going to hear about how they've successfully deployed a variety of data management platforms um, which include um, our own portfolio manager here at EPA, in addition to their business partner, Enernox Energy Intelligence Software. Um, and it, it's interesting, if they've used a number of platforms to, um, to find improvements in individual buildings, um, to manage their uh, entire real estate portfolio, and then to track and report up on the progress toward their corporate sustainability goals. Um, so we're going to hear um, specific examples on how they've addressed each one of these. Uh, so to take us through that story, uh, we have uh, Amy Gindle, Ben Myers, and Jim Whalen uh, with Boston Properties, and I'll go ahead and turn the presentation over to them. Great. Um, so this is Amy. Um, I want to thank um, Energy Star and Enernox for inviting us to tell our story today. Um, first of all, I'm going to start with um, what, our, it, what is our sustainability strategy? So we want to promote our growth and operations in a sustainable and responsible manner across our five regions. And what's important is we focus on the economic, social, and environmental aspects of our activities through the design and construction of new development and the operation of existing buildings. Our organization uh, culture is pretty competitive by nature. So we believe when there's a scoreboard, people play differently. So how do we keep score? Well, we have partnered with uh, four different companies uh, for data management platforms, uh, the first being Energy, Star, Energy Star's Portfolio Manager. So we use Portfolio Manager to measure and track whole building energy and water use. And we can use also this as a benchmark for the performance of a building or group of buildings or also our whole entire portfolio. So I think internally we consider Portfolio Manager as our book of record for all energy and water consumption. And then what's exciting and, and new that we just um, um, are investigating, but starting in 2017, we'll be tracking waste across our portfolio um, in Portfolio Manager. So we're very excited to launch that in the new year. The second partner is Enernox. So we've had a, a relationship with Enernox since 2009. And Enernox provides us energy intelligence software and services. And they, I will just run down quickly what they provide. Um, Real-time energy data through real-time meters. Utility bill management, which basically processes over 900 of our utility accounts, so invoices for, the, for all that um, energy data and water data. Providing energy advisory services, so those are monthly calls to look for opportunities to, to reduce energy with our engineers. Demand response, and then lastly, energy procurement. Uh, the third data management platform that is relatively new for us is Measurable. They were a new partner uh, for us in 2015. So data from actually Portfolio Manager is integrated with the software. This allows us to analyze and compute uh, results for our annual key performance indicators for all of our sustainability reporting. So that's very important. And one of the major um, reporting uh, packages that we use in assessments is through GRES. And GRES is the Global Real Estate Sustainability Benchmark Assessment. There's over 700 plus companies and global real estate um, companies, both public and private, that participate. And there's really an opportunity to GRES assesses our annual performance as it relates to environmental, social, and governance aspects of our business against these other companies. So we're very proud of, of that, and we use that again internally as a big indicator of how we stand relative to our peers. So we just reviewed our data management platforms that we use to monitor and track our goals. And the first time, for the first time, uh, we publicly stated goals in our 2015 GRI Aligned Sustainability Report. So that's the global uh, reporting initiative. Um, so again, very excited. We published this in May of this year. 
Um, all of our goals are measured from the 2008 baseline with targets for 2020. And I'll just briefly kind of go through these big four. So we have an energy use reduction goal of 15% by 2020, which is based on energy use intensity. A 20 by 20 greenhouse gas reduction, so again, 20% by 2020 on, on greenhouse gas emissions. And a 20 by 20 water use reduction goal, um, which again, a 20% by 2020. And lastly, our waste diversion uh, goal, which is increasing to 65% by 2020. So we really felt this was important to state our goals publicly and really demonstrate our leadership position among our peers. Um, next, Ben Myers will demonstrate how we track these goals, really leveraging our partnership with Energy Star and Enernoc. Thanks, Amy. So how we use energy matters to our business and our stakeholders. And when we conducted a sustainability materiality assessment just this past year, we saw that energy was at the top of the list with air quality and green building. So energy supply, generation, and capital investment decisions we make impact operating costs and the carbon intensity of our business. We've noticed that three important trends are underway. The first is that we're seeing a growing interest in sustainability from our shareholders, customers, employees, and the communities we serve. And more and more frequently, our, our customers are looking at green power and high performance real estate and what we're doing as, as the building owner and property manager. The second, energy use transparency is at an all time high. We're disclosing more energy data than ever to municipalities with EPA portfolio manager. We're disclosing information to the general public with our annual sustainability report that Amy mentioned and our website and to the investor community through GRES. Third, there's been a rapid, a rapid energy technology development over the past five years. And we see um, extensive and accurate submetering, energy use monitoring, energy storage, and renewable energy availability options that are evolving and becoming more and more cost effective. As the director of the sustainability program, I work with a team of talented property managers and developers to manage our energy consumption. And since 2006, we've been using Energy Star Portfolio Manager to track our energy use. It's a tool that serves as a very important historical book of record. And with the enormous data set we've created for the 146 buildings we've enrolled, we study metrics like site energy use intensity and make projections. So that's the chart you see here on the upper left, looking at our portfolio and growth over time to get an idea of how energy use is changing and will change looking ahead. Over the last three years, we've reduced our like-for-like -like energy use intensity, 6.7%, saving $9.7 million annually in utility costs, and we've reduced site energy use intensity across our portfolio a full 13% since 2008. We also use the tool to measure the efficacy of energy investments. This past year, we evaluated $182 million in capital expenditures from the past seven years and found that energy-related capital expenditures had on average a 13% rate of return, and in several cases, improved our control of mechanical systems and occupant comfort. Through these investments and active management of our buildings, we've raised our energy star score up 9% over just the past three years to 77.4 in 2005. We've earned the Energy Star label for 52 of our properties, which represents 56% of our eligible floor area and continue to drive properties above the 75 point threshold. Using our portfolio manager data set, we engage the regions to discuss overall performance using goal tracking charts like this one here. We find that these types of charts appeal to this competitive nature Amy mentioned and the entrepreneurial regional leaders that we have in Boston, New York, San Francisco, DC, and now Los Angeles. So this chart shows energy use, energy star score, water use intensity, and waste diversion. It has, it has our goals, so our 2008 baseline and our 2020 target and it shows how the region is doing and allows them to quickly compare how they're doing versus the rest of the company and how they're progressing through the year towards their annual targets. Breaking out the data, we can create charts that tease out asset performance anomalies and energy audit prospects. This chart here shows all the buildings in that first data set in DC. Uh, we've, we've chosen to uh, for them to remain anonymous and just listed them in the chart. 
So working closely with these regional teams, we continuously review Energy Star scores, energy and water intensity metrics at the building level with this type of chart. And this chart is really uh, based on a data set and a report that we generate using the EPA Portfolio Manager tool. We use interval data in addition to the Portfolio Manager data set to execute demand response events and to actively manage our buildings using real-time energy consumption data. At 200 Clarendon Street, uh, formerly the Hancock Tower, we're working with Enernoc to, to make interval data actionable. Off hours and weekend setback actions are reducing load and we are able to accurately quantify peak demand reduction savings to inspire deeper energy cuts. So the two charts we see here, the top is a, a standard load profile and, and in this example, we were looking specifically at Sundays and using a dashboard we've installed at the Hancock Tower 200 Clarendon, we we're watching our Sunday use and in real time reacting and changing the way we operate the building to, to lower that, that uh, load as much as possible. And in the bottom uh, chart, we've looked at a range of the same time and the same day with the same weather conditions, what our peak load is, and then quantified the savings, which are up over $4,000 if we're able to reduce our peak load on that one day, that peak day peak load to the, the peak load that's the third highest in that same range. So I'm gonna run through a couple case studies very quickly. Uh, we acquired the Hancock Tower, now 200 Clarendon in, in late 2012. And since then, we've uh, invested in energy-focused capital expenditures totaling $12.2 million. Uh, this year, through the first five months, we measured a, a like-for-like 32% energy use reduction, and we expect that to stabilize around 20%. And we anticipate an annual payback of about $2.2 million a year and a simple payback period of five and a half years for that $12.2 million invested. And yesterday, just yesterday, we were notified that the project has earned the Energy Star label, which is just amazing. And we're thrilled that our investments in the property have raised the Energy Star score from a starting point of 38 to 79 today. So huge progress. And uh, I think the tool has been important. The bottom graph here, shows uh, in the blue line is investment over time and the green line is, is energy uh, use. So you can see a nice correlation um, between dollars invested in energy systems and energy use reduction. Next slide. Innovation and, and use of technology has become an important part of our culture at, at Boston Properties. Brian Coop, our, our regional manager here in Boston, often talks about developing the iPad of buildings. We want to innovate and we really want to drive forward the, the technology around our development projects and, and our property management operations. So in addition to energy intelligence software and EPA portfolio manager, we're using tools like Lead Dynamic Plaque at 100 Federal Street to monitor energy, water, waste, and transportation metrics. And this is a screenshot of the plaque most recently. At this property, we were able to raise the uh, LEED EB certification level from silver to gold. And through the use of the platform measurable that, that Amy introduced, we can visualize the impact of, steam, of the steam to electric drive chiller plant conversion. And here you can see the, the annual uh, 770,000 energy dollars in energy cost savings that project yields. Another best demonstrated practice from this year is the LED lighting retrofit at the Prudential Center Garage. We replaced over 3,800 T5 fluorescent fixtures with 8-watt LEDs and immediately witnessed a 57% garage energy use reduction. And this is a screenshot from uh, Enernox EIS platform showing that reduction almost instantaneously once those lights were switched over. So like Amy said, uh, when there's a scoreboard, people play differently. And we're looking forward to using EIS and Energy Star Portfolio Manager to measure and verify performance at our, at our new development projects like 888 Boylston Street pictured here, a project we're calling Boston's most sustainable building, which we've designed to consume 47% less energy than office buildings in its peer group. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jim Whalen to talk about technology and our approach. So um, just as the, the primary, as the CIO for the company, um, you know, we, we have been, kind of to give you two context reference points. One is, you know, as a company, we're very focused on our financial discipline. We 
we have a culture of um, just keeping a pulse on expenses and revenue, and it's a very data-driven environment. And uh, in the last seven or eight years, we've actually really upped our game around data, data, data. And the investment we've done in energy is just a continue. I would just see it as a continuation of that story, um, you know, really around a cultural discipline as well as around um, you know just making investments in in a platform. So you you think about you know what Amy and Ben talked about about the, the different tool sets we're doing. Well, clearly. You know, we need a, a platform for the just the handling and packaging of data. You just think about energy, whether it be the interval data uh, coming off meters, meters that uh, Ben was highlighting, or our invoice data that we we also have aligned with Enernoc, and it's all all this data rich, um, uh, data rich, um, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, Data rich platform, and then we need to feed that into the various reporting mechanisms and meet the various reporting uh, demands that we have. So it's really about rationalizing processes it's around making that more efficient and making it more accurate. I mean, that's another thing. And again, I think one of the things that we really found in the partnership with Enernoc is that we've got this uh, data platform that we continue to continue to work with them. They're, they're continuing to do R and D investments, and we continue to partner. Um, very closely with them, but it's also coupled with uh, the services stack that Amy was mentioning. So we do energy advisory services and we do demand response, which is actually where we started with them as well as energy procurement. So it's really, again, this this um, this ability to be partnered uh, with uh, with this platform and with a set of services um, to, to really to drive our success and what we're doing. And it's a continuous improvement model that we are definitely on the journey uh, with. So. Mm -hmm. So I think um, Niels or Bill, I think we're in a good place if you wanted to kind of maybe talk, ask, ask, take some questions. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, um, Ben and Amy. That was um, very informative. Um, and there's a lot of information there. So uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and turn over the uh, Q&A portion um, to my colleague, Niels Klinkenberg. Um, what's coming through chat. Please just address your questions to all panelists and we'll make sure um, uh, Nils works through them um, one by one. I might also mention we have uh, Sarah McCauley with us uh, at NRNOC as well um, so we can get her help in asking any um, questions specific to uh, her company or product. Great. Thanks, Bill. Uh, we have a couple questions that have come in so far and definitely encourage people to take the opportunity and use that chat window to write in others. Uh, first one, I think, Ben, this was uh, written in when you were speaking. You used the term like-for-like like energy use a couple of times. Can you define that or explain that? Sure. So like-for-like like energy use is, a, is, a, is an attempt to make an apples-to-apples apples comparison. The uh, normalization of data is fairly common in the energy space. Our normalization really only addresses water. Uh, but we're looking at ways to do more of a like-for-like like comparison using occupancy. In certain cases, uh, we have to do that, like at the Hancock Tower where we've had changes in tenancy. We can't make a, a declaration that we're saving energy um, because there's been a shift or we're, energy use has increased tremendously because there's been a shift. So density trends are, are often considered in the like-for-like like, uh, area. But like-for-like like usually applies to, to absolute energy. So you're trying to measure the same uh, set of buildings um, one year over the next. Okay, that makes sense because also um, your the number of buildings in your portfolio would be changing over time. So if you just looked at the total portfolio use, that would change, right? That's right, and that's something we need to consider when we're adding a, an acquisition or stabilizing a new development mid-year. Uh, it can't. You can't do a true like-for-like like of two years of data when you only have partial for one of the years. Great. Um, that relates to another question, actually, um, that well, actually I have uh, that I've heard people ask in the past, which is when uh, for a commercial real estate firm that you know, your portfolio is changing over time, is there ever any passing of that energy or water data along from a previous owner or manager? 
it, you want us to plug the tool, don't you? <laughs> I think we inherit the EPA Portfolio Manager account, and it provides a tremendous amount of historical data. So we were we benefited from that data at 100 Federal Street. Looking back historically, we go back to 2005 and do a carbon reduction analysis uh, as part of the Mayor's Carbon Cup program here in Boston. Uh, we wouldn't have had that data, I don't believe, otherwise. The amount of paperwork that would have had to be transferred and records maintained, I, just, I don't think that would have worked. Same, same is true at Colorado Center right now. We're, we're in the process of, of bringing those buildings into the Boston Properties uh, platform. A new set of properties in L.A. or Los Angeles for us. So. That's fantastic. And actually, it was a... I mean, that's great if you want to plug Portfolio Manager, um, but it was this is your question too, um, since I think that's that's definitely a best practice that EPA recommends, but uh, I don't think has always universally happened. So that's fantastic to hear that you figured out how to do that, um, and does point out the great feature of Portfolio Manager since it is a third-party tool in a way um, that it can pass that along. Uh, we have another question. Um, which is what types of questions are investors asking in relation to the sustainability strategy of Boston properties? So that, that's a big question. I think a lot of them are answered through GRES and we, that ESG environmental, social and governance disclosure covers a number of aspects. So they're looking at that score as a high level screen of many of the things we're doing at Boston Properties, and we've heard anecdotally that if we are a green star, we get put in a certain bucket, and if we aren't, we're in another bucket. We happen to be a green star for our fifth consecutive year, ranking among the top 5% of global companies reporting, and we're second out of 12 in our U.S. office peer group. So I can tell you that that standing is impressive to our investors and JV partners. Especially international ones. Yes. So regarding energy, um, one thing that we see more investors focused on is carbon emissions, and there's obviously a direct correlation between carbon emissions and mm -hmm. scope one and two carbon emissions in particular, and what we're doing and how we're buying energy, how much energy we're using. So um, that that is an interesting point. I, I think most of the attention is focused on carbon, and it works its way back to our energy strategy. Great. Uh, somewhat related question here. I think you've partially answered, but uh, for the Energy Star and other sustainability you've talked about, um, is it, I guess the question is about the balance of using that primarily internally as a management tool, or is it also communicated publicly? Um, and if so, how is it communicated to different groups? I mean, you just spoke to investors. You mentioned a sustainability report earlier, but um, tenants or you know, the public on the street, anyone else like that, can you speak to that? So the, the number one way we're using it to publicly disclose data today, uh, in, aside from our annual report, which is available at the website, bostonproperties.com slash sustainability, and I encourage everyone to go check it out, is through building energy reporting and disclosure ordinances. Uh, we, we have that type of regulation in every one of our major markets. So we're using the portfolio manager tool to generate a report and click submit data for our actively managed property set in each one of those jurisdictions. And so that's, that's something we do quite commonly. The Energy Star metric is, I think, well understood. I, I, talk, I think of it as like uh, Mickey Mouse, you know, it's a household term. So giving uh, our tenants an Energy Star score, I think, resonates with them. They get it. They see it on their dishwasher uh, refrigerator. Um, so that they can understand that it, it's indicative of the strong energy performance without us having to do too much explanation. But we do um, seek to achieve the Energy Star label at all of our properties, and we let tenants know that we're Energy Star labeled. So any building that has a score less than 75 has an annual goal to raise that score at least one point, and every building with a score of 75 or better uh, is required to apply for the Energy Star label. It, and one thing I, I this is Jim speaking. One thing I'd highlight is that you know one of the one of the reasons we align with Enernoc um, is because you know the tool set is what our engineers running our buildings day to day use to keep a pulse on what's going on. So 
this, you know, sometimes you come into the challenge and you, you do a top play, you do a top end play, and it doesn't necessarily benefit the people that are actually running the buildings. And it's really, this alignment was really important to have a stack that actually is meeting our upper, upper needs of reporting and feeding that and doing it with accuracy, but also a day-to-day -day tool that's used all day long by uh, the people, again, operating our buildings. So. Mm -hmm. You see at, at Salesforce Tower, we're preparing to um, do some engagement with tenants where we submit uh, monthly energy use reports and quarterly energy use reports, and we're talking through that with them now. I just want to add one thing. The other, um, one of our goals, and Ben and I have talked the length of this, is really the communicating, um, I think, or increasing our communication to our tenants about our story and really what we're doing and how we do that. I think we do do a good job with, again, our website, with, again, reporting to GRES and um, the GRI report, but as far as really getting in front of our tenants with all of the things that we're doing and what we're accomplishing, either asset-specific or on a portfolio-wide basis, I think we, there's still some opportunity there to, to um, you know, change the communication. Yeah, and the working with the, the Real Estate Roundtable and the Sustainability Policy Advisory Committee, we've been advocating for the adoption of a Tenant Star program that measures tenant energy use. We think that'll be an important driver of the tenant landlord sustainability relationship, and we're and we're looking forward to that uh, that tool as well. Great, thanks. Um, I have a one great question here that kind of feeds off of what you just spoke about, which is how do you organize yourself around maintaining the data in Energy Star Portfolio Manager across the company? <laughs> There's. There's two, I think, main practices. Uh, Amy, you want to explain UBM, the integration, and what's, what's yep, going yeah, on today? Yeah, that's actually a good point that we didn't hit. So one of the first things that we, we did when we signed up with Enernoc for the UBM uh, services was the utility bill management, utility bill management, management yeah. Yeah. Um, was to basically create a connection of that data that um, Enernoc was basically getting off of the bills from consumption and then doing an automatic feed and connection into portfolio manager on a meter basis. So we're in the throes of that and, and are doing very well and you know, maybe 30, 40% of the way there, connecting yep. these water meters and, and electricity meters. So that was the and, the, and the old way was you, you know, yeah, copy it onto a spreadsheet, you then manually enter it. You know, so we're literally looking at how do we automate all that handling and packaging. So for having a third party actually, um, you know, again, manage our utility bills was a huge part of our story and our strategy. Again, we're already paying someone to, to kind of get all the good data out for us, and why have people, again, take an invoice and then do data entry again into portfolio manager and trying to reconcile mm -hmm. to the actual bill. And, for, and I think for me, it's huge from the data integrity perspective and just accuracy. Because yeah. all the controls that are done at Enernoc to get that data off the, you know, off the invoice correctly, then flowing into portfolio manager was huge. Right. So, so Amy and, and uh, our IT team have been hard at work um, getting that integration complete. Uh, there are examples like San Francisco, PG&E, where we're getting automated data flow, and we, we'd like to see more utilities offering that service. I think what we're doing is, is shortcutting um, and doing it ourselves with the UVM integration. Right. And then I think the other part of that, too, then there's regional um, you know, heads in the engineering group and on a sustainability committee that Ben shares that really is responsible for doing really monitoring, making sure all data is complete. We don't get all the data in that way, but it's really looking at it and validating that you know, the measure is correct, that the attributes are correct in the way that they're, you know, which we have best practices that we try to, you know, employ across all of our buildings um, to, you know, basically maximize the score and make sure we're doing it according to, you know, the best practice. Great. Um, have a couple more questions here, and we're just getting on the half hour. I know we can stay on a little longer as long as there are questions coming. One is, do you have a rate of return analysis that you can share on the water reduction and conservation projects that you've done? We'd have to take that offline. <laughs> we, we, uh, I don't have those numbers right in front of me, but we, we certainly have done some analysis of, of particular projects. Yeah. It's on a case by case basis. It's though. more of a case yeah. by case. Yeah. Yeah. But at DC, they did have an irrigate. They have they basically separately metered and doing the separating irrigation from you know potable water. So that was a. That they have. We, we don't understand. I don't know. If we have the numbers, but one of our uh, strategic priorities that we 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 outlined with um, the DC region and the Boston region this year is to quantify the return on investment of rainwater harvesting and reuse in cooling towers. 
That's something I want to understand better. Uh, I know we have to do a certain amount of stormwater retention on site anyway, so there's a sunk cost there. But what's the incremental premium to tie that uh, stormwater retention into the cooling tower system to filter the water for cooling tower use? That's, I think that's, that's more of an ongoing study, but I, I think that gets to uh, the question that was asked. If you're looking at the addition of low flow uh, fixtures like aerators, that means the payback's virtually immediate. Those are extremely low cost measures that reduce um, indoor water consumption substantially. Great. And uh, any similar stories to share about waste? I know that uh, in Boston itself, there are local requirements around uh, reducing or uh, eliminating certain types of waste to landfill, that sort of thing. Yeah, so our, our goal is to get to a 65% company-wide diversion rate by 2020. We're at around 59% today. Um, we've made a lot of progress uh, over, over the last seven years or so. Um, one thing that's a challenge, we'll start with that, is, is retail and, and our restaurants and the, and the organics, the addition of organics to our waste stream that aren't being recycled. So that's something we're really targeting at a few properties where we have low diversion rates, uh, largely because of retail use. So one thing I'm noticing is as we go from a suburban office complex with 100% office to more of an urban context where you have mixed uses, retail, and office together, uh, water use and um, recycling diversion rates get skewed by the uses, use types that aren't pure office. So um, that's, that's definitely a challenge. Some of the best practices, I think we've had tremendous success in New York working with Great Forest to do waste audits. We have a, we have a very high diversion rate um, or higher diversion rate there. Um, so, and I won't just mention Great Forest, there are a few others um, that have, have worked with us on, to waste audit and increase diversion rates. And where we don't have that kind of third party waste management, we're looking at um, other solutions. Great, thanks. That looks like all the questions we've gotten in so far. Um, if there are any others, feel free to chat them in. But um, otherwise, uh, maybe I'll just pass it over to Boston Properties or Enernock, any closing thoughts, and uh, Bill as well from EPA. And I think that was really a tour de force there on the use of data management platforms for energy as well as um, water and waste. So I want to thank our panelists, um, Jim Wynn, Ben Myers, and Amy Kendall, uh, and thank you, Nils, for organizing this. Um, I will add that uh, this presentation is on our training website. It's recorded, so if you want to pass this along to someone or you missed a piece of uh, content you want to share, uh, check that out. Um, Nils, if you could uh, chat that address out, um, yep. they'll have the coordinates. We'll need, get, we'll need to get that posted, but we'll send an email out to everyone who registered for the webinar with that information. Okay. All right. Very good. That works well, too. So um, with that, I'll close up this webinar. Um, uh, thank you, Boston Properties, for your time. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks, everyone, for your attendance. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.